This band and our podcast couldn't be possible without these folks. So without any further ado, here is a shout out to our sponsors. Pure Body Benefits is passionate about delivering exceptional client care and advanced skin care treatments. From laser hair removal to rejuvenating facials, their expert team is ready to guide you through your skin care journey. Contact them today at purebodybenefits.com. Multiple studies have shown that acupuncture, either alone or in combination with conventional medicine, can help treat conditions such as back, joint, neck, shoulder pain, or internal, like digestion, anxiety, stress, fatigue, sleep, or skin health, depression, inflammation, weight loss, etc. If you want help with any one of these things, make sure you get a hold of modernacupuncture.com. They're located in Fort Worth, Texas, in the Alliance area. If you like getting into competitions for fishing, well, go no further. Please check out BassChamps.com. Bass Champs, Texas' number one tournament. These guys are the number one in leading tournaments all over the place, so make sure you check them out at BassChamps.com. Located only 15 minutes from Denton and Fort Worth, the Mule Barn in Justin, Texas, takes pride in treating every person like locals. Whatever walk of life you come from, they want to serve what everyone wants. Delicious food, world-class entertainment, and cold drinks. So if you haven't been there and you're close by, make sure you go check out the Mule Barn in Justin, Texas. You can find them at MuleBarnTexas.com. I've been playing at this place for more than a decade. Folks, it doesn't get much better than when you go to the Blue Bayou in North Fort Worth. You talk about a backwoods gym. This is it. If you're looking for the real Texas experience, live music, great food, southern cooked, feel at home, feel like you can just watch the ball game, get a steak, get food, whatever it is you want. You want to see live music? They've got it seven nights a week. So make sure you go out and check out the Blue Bayou located at 12670 Morris Dido, New York Road, Fort Worth, Texas, and follow them on Facebook. All right, let's get on with the show. Here's our next episode of Blood in the Water podcast, hosted by Justin Ross and Deadwood Revival. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Blood in the Water, episode seven. My name is Justin Ross, and we are Deadwood Revival. Uh, on the screen here, everybody wave when you can. Uh, Mr. Tristan Murphy, uh, Mr. Corey Vise, Mr. Aaron Capers, AC, and Bob will be joining us shortly. He's having some technical difficulties, so as soon as he can get in here. Man, I feel like I haven't seen you guys in fucking forever. It's, it's, it's weird. I haven't, even t- I haven't talked to AC in fucking two weeks. That's fair. You've been fucking so busy, dude. Like, I don't even see how you're breathing right now. I I, I, I woke up for this. <laughs> you really? Yeah. Did you have Did you have our chat muted? Uh, That chat's been muted since, since we... <laughs> this is creation, dude. I'm riding the oh, same boat. I'm like, you know what? AC's not answering the chat. I bet he's got that bitch. I muted. remember when that was a big thing. Like, when the chat got created and everybody was complaining about 1 a.m. messages. And I'm just sitting in the back going, mute the chat. Yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> if just mute it and check it daily for information. If nothing informative's going on, either chime in or disregard. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that's why I chime in every so often, every once in a while. I just like throw a funny quip out there. It's like, oh, because I actually have my phone out and I'm checking it. Like, oh, there we go. But if not, <laughs> I'm on the move so much that I just, this month is just hell. So, oh, I bet, dude. Yeah, ended drum sober strong. Yeah. So, how did your uh, your team fare out? How did your students fare out? Uh, not great, um, but good, all things considered. I mean, they had a their percussion director quit, which is what led me to like kind of take over that drumline gig for the fall. And uh, I don't know. Anytime like kids lose a percussion director, it's it's a it's a real hard pill to swallow because you know the percussion teachers are usually the only teachers you'll have from beginner band which is usually sixth to seventh grade all the way through them graduating right so 
Like, those kids took it hard, and they're kids at the end of the day, teenagers, you know, all the emotions, and dad just went out for milk and cigarettes and never came back vibes. Ooh. So I think you're just, I'm just dealing with that like, all year long, which is a challenge, but these kids Yeah, uh, but dude, I mean, you're a good dude. You could bring them up and bring them back. Where did, how did they place in the competitions? Uh, Early on, they did pretty well. Uh, towards the end, when they started to get better, the scores got a little worse. Um, just the nature of the beast. Right before things get really, really good, sometimes things have to get really bad. So yeah. that's where we. That's how we ended the season. It wasn't paced very well. Um, but I think overall, like player to player, there was a lot of growth throughout the throughout the marching season, which was cool. But aside from that. And everybody, those kids busted their ass for me, and that was dope. Like they, 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 they worked their little asses off. <laughs> so Fuck yeah. Do you guys hear a white noise real bad? It's Come, not uh, faintly. Uh, Corey, I think it was you. What? Yeah, you started. It went, talking, it went away. Bob, talk to me. No, we can't hear you. Uh, I got nothing coming from you. I don't hear the white noise. Yeah, I don't hear the white noise either, but I don't hear Bob. I think your audio... Can you hear me, Bob? I think... Let me... uh, Can you turn... Yeah, talk to me now. No, that white noise is back. Corey, what... Don't look at me. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute every I'm gonna mute people one at a time here. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, uh, I'm gonna ask Tristan to unmute. Okay, that's weird. It's just coming and going. It's like this white noise, but I can't hear Bob. No. no. What about now? Can you yes. hear me now? Yes. Sorry, man. I, my internet just went out, and I didn't have time to update the app, so I actually came in through the browser. So it's all different and weird this time. That's a thing, funky. Yeah. Bob, I'm interested. If you talk right on your mic, what does it sound like? <laughs> nothing. Got nothing from you. Nothing. Not a. I think it's. I think that white noise is coming from his mic. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 There we go. That sounds like the best I've ever heard you. I moved it and unplugged it, and uh, I didn't feel like leaning over. Can you raise it up to your mouth? Is it, is it on an arm that can do that? I move a bunch of shit around. You're asking a whole lot of me, man. I'm tired. Just want you to sound good, bro. That's all. We just we don't want you to sound like you're in the bathroom taking a shit while we're all talking. You're here to hear me talk. You guys are good. Well, Bob, I'm going to ask the the question, man. Where is she? You can't. She's, just, you can't. She's, just... she's finally fucking sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, for the people out there watching, Bob got a new family member this week, and her name is Ayla. Tell yeah. us about her, man. Oh, she's a she's a little blue uh, blue staffy pit. Um, I think she's ten weeks old. Uh, got her from Rescue Row. Um, it's a they're a dog rescue organization, um, and they're they're great. She's she's awesome, man. She's smart as hell. Or either that, or I've just gotten so used to American Bulldogs that I forgot how easy other dogs are to train. Because yep. like Malgus was so hard to train. I mean, there's a reason why the United States Marine use the American Bulldog as their mascot. You know? Sure, and Malgus was just. He's gonna do what he's gonna do. It was hard to train, but I've already got she just in the four days we've got her, she can already sit, like put stuff down. She knows to go to her place, you know, all that stuff. But she is she's at the velociraptor stage where everything goes in her mouth. She she was eating rocks earlier today. She's trying to eat rocks. I saw um, I saw I saw the uh, video you made of her like digging in the garden. So oh yeah, so she's got this little like this little pink pig thing that like crinkles. And she loves it. It's great. But she uh she tried to bury it. Yes, yeah, so she can cook for later. Yeah, exactly. What is it with dogs? Like if you can't eat it or fuck it, you bury it. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah. I could I could say I know dudes that are like that too. Yeah, right. She well, she's man. great. You guys are you guys will meet her on Thanksgiving. She's she's a she's a hoot, man. Um, yeah. It was time, you know, I, I waited a long time, but I was I always gotta have a girl dog in my life for some reason. Like don't get me wrong, man, Malgus is a great dog. He's he's my boy, and yeah, but for some reason all the girl dogs I've ever had, they tend to like me more. I got that effect on the ladies, what can I say? There it is. Yeah, there it is. Watch it going out for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sorry. Corey, how about you, my man? What's been going on? Uh, A gecko got in my shower an hour ago. That was fun. Yeah? Scary? Or did you, were you like, yeah, man? No, was, hey, hello, little fellow. We're going to wash my hair today. Just a little what gecko. The- Fuck, man. That's a random thing ever. <laughs> so fucking random, dude. How's the kiddo doing? How's the wife? I'll send you a picture. No, chill. Relax. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Relax. Gecko or your other gecko. Well, you guys may notice I sold that. Wait. It's over here. Wait, no. Oh, yeah, it was on the other go. side. Yeah, it's yeah. Gone. yeah, sold it. Sold it this weekend. Found some, found some dude that wanted to buy it. Got rid of it. I see the old blue bass back there in the background hanging yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, she still only got one string missing. I was gonna talk some shit to Sish about that if he was gonna show up. But. You got to bring that motherfucker out in order to change it. Right, I know. Uh, I like the new one better, anyways. Fish is Fish is feeling sick, I believe. I think he's been down with a cold or some shit. Like Corey, I'm not opening this. <laughs> I'm not opening this. Happening, come on. Oh, it's a gecko. All right, it's a little brown gecko. Oh, my god, dude. I didn't know what was happening. I saw that just from the picture thing. I, I, was like, I, I, I had no shame. I thought it was gonna be a gecko hugging his dick. <laughs> I did too. I was like, dude, I am not doing this. Gecko look- when did, when did oh. you get there? <laughs> Jesus, gecko looks enormous. Oh shit! What about you, T? What's been going on with you, man? You're yeah, gonna just work. You go out of town tomorrow, don't you? Yeah, we leave. Uh, leave around five a.m. Start driving up to West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. Make it there. Come back if I like the Smoky Mountains enough. Peace. <laughs> Later, man. I don't blame you. <laughs> it's not like you got shit to lose. Yeah, enjoy the opiates and meth. <laughs> Tell your mom, tell, tell your grandma once she gets done with the pod to pack your shit up and send it her way. Send it yeah, exactly. Hey, you know how we unloaded all your shit? Put all my shit in there and send it to me, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm here. Nah, I'm excited. I'm excited to knock some, you know, bucket list off. Do a little half the country, I guess. Road road, road trip. Nice. Yeah, I man. think. I don't know. Totally. I'm not hitting 25 states. I know that. That was going to be my next thing. It's twenty five. Yeah, I knew it was. I knew I was going to get math equated in this whole conversation. It's all good. The equivalent of dick, you will not reach the mile marker of fraction nine three two because it's not really <laughs> factual for it to happen. But did you know that a gecko will not actually clam onto your dick? It'll just turn the color of your cock. That would some shit from Bob. It'd be like that. Nice. That I had no idea. It sounded that awesome. <laughs> It's my Bob boys. <laughs> How about you, man? How's your week, man? I shit nothing. I fucking literally sat there with my goddamn foot in the air. Uh, and finally feeling better. I went and got some new shoes today. And uh, the phone started ringing this morning. So that's good. Uh, I was really happy. Uh, we had like nine shows call this morning uh, instantly. I had the first phone call came in at 810. I was asleep. I looked over. I was like, "What the fuck?" I went to bed at like five thirty, and I was like, "What the fuck is my name?" I lean over and I'm like, "Oh, it's Kelly." Hold on. I was like, "Hello." <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you want? Why are you calling? She goes, "Honey, we got work to do. This shit's happening. Let's go." I'm like, "Him? What time is it?" <laughs> I just went to bed. She's like, "Call me when you wake up." So I called her. <laughs> so we got like eight to nine offers on the table right now. Hey, yo, what the f- What was that? Oh. That was me fucking around. Sorry. 
think I just heard Death Star. Yeah, find out. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Hell yeah, man. It was a. Uh, it was a weird day for sure, but uh, I'm gonna keep this podcast non-political because that's what everyone's thinking that we're gonna fucking talk about, and I don't think we should at all. You'll see me get off this motherfucker so fast I'll start fires. <laughs> so uh, I did. I did have a talk with Mr. Chris Howell from um, uh, Cafe Solo, and so um, we're gonna end up having a meeting. Uh, all of us like band collective not on a zoom call and um decide a date to go in and start recording but we would basically be looking at 10 songs mixed and mastered with any edits we want it's not bad bad not bad at all <laughs> so yo, hit me up what's yo what's the plug's name <laughs> chris howell Yo, yeah, let me Cafe Solo Studios. Introduce him to your local fat white boy. Yeah, ten songs, mixed and mastered. Uh all the edits we want. Uh, see that's the part right there that, that yeah, interests that's me. That's the part that gets you. Well, because he does dollars a day and it's you get eight hours in a day's a session. Okay. So you can go in and record all you want. But we're talking about doing ten songs. Yeah. Right? So ten songs would be in there like if we're doing two a day. Right. Yeah, you'll be in there for about five days, ten, twelve hours. Yeah. No, nah, well, I mean, we'll knock them out pretty fast. It's just as long as we got our shit together enough to go in for the song that, that like today we're going in and we're recording these two songs. We know what we're doing. We're gonna get in and record them and make any adjustments on the fly right there and have it done, and then move move on to the next song. And so, I think we can pull off in four days getting the 10 songs done and use the fifth day for vocals, knock vocals out all in one day, and then uh, mix it. That's master. a heavy vocal day, dude. I, I'd be all right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not discrediting. I'm I just sing, saying. I sing heavy for two, two fucking hours straight, like 10 songs. I mean, fuck, I'll be fine. I get little breaks in between, take a drink of hot, you know, warm water and shit and be able to, like, yeah. yeah I just know where to, which ones to start with. Where's the powerhouse going to be? I'm going to save that for the end. Oh uh, yeah. So, um, got the call from Coors today. And, oh really? Yeah. No shit. No shit. Yeah. Been waiting on that one. What'd they say? Uh, they said we are green light. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, now they're locking in uh, how many venues is going to be. So they're back to that now. Now that they know what their budget is. Uh, we're back to green light on finding out how many venues it's going to be out of the 25. Is it going to be the whole 25? Because the last number I heard was nine. Mm. So is it going to be 10, 15? What's it going to be? You know, so how would that, I don't know if, I don't know if you've made the announcement yet, but for no. the other, the other big thing for next year, how would that line up? We would route it with it. It would help. It would help okay. us. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, there's another venue that I'm not going to mention the name of, but it's up north of Oklahoma that you guys have heard me talk about before. And they, you know, we had a meeting about it today and, uh, there's just a reoffer going like a counter offer going back to them. Lord, I hope so. Because dude, it was just like, come on, really? That's what you're going to offer? If I lived like a block away, maybe. Not even. Yeah. Not even fuck if it was a block away. Yeah, let's be real. Yeah. I have no idea what we're talking That's, about. Uh, there was a venue that offered us a, a straight 60-40 split for about a nine-hour drive to go play their venue. Oh, okay, yeah. No yeah. guarantee, no no meeting the rider, no put, no hotels, no nothing, just 60-40. So I did some homework and background on them and found out from some locals around there that are family of mine, found out they don't even promote their fucking venue. Like, they put it on Facebook and their fucking website. That's about it. And they don't they don't push they don't do any kind of like advertising whatsoever and so you're gonna that's what you're gonna do and you're gonna take forty percent out of our hundred percent push fuck off no way no that way seems it's insane that's why that seems you're to not- be a, that like the venues that actually like promote are so few and far in between these days like it's mm-hmm. all expected on the artists to do yeah um, yeah it's whack. We just got to take a stand as artists and be like, man, look, I know what I'm worth. I know what we draw, but I know, I know if even if we're going into a town that we don't have never played in before, I know 
that we are going to promote the absolute shit out of that show. Every every way we can, there's six of us that work with this band, and six of us are going to be pushing to in that area to get people to know the Deadwood name and come out to the show. But regardless, if we had five people show up, the amount of radius in that area where it's being promoted at, meanwhile, they're getting hella promotion out of it. People see the name. They may not come to our show, but they know. The they know. Sorry. Thank God. Edit. I'll edit that. <laughs> they know that the venue is. The venue knows it's getting its fucking promo. Right. You know, so. Uh, you know, great for you guys, but uh, don't shit on us for doing the work. Yeah. There ain't no stage worth uh, for for a headlining spot when you when you're working your dick off to get known. There's no stage worth just going and playing on a hope, unless you're playing Madison Square Garden or you're playing yeah. the fucking Mile High Stadium or playing or Dallas Opera House. Or- yeah, like an opera, something like that. But you're opening up for somebody huge. There's gonna be forty thousand people there. And then fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Also in the middle of winter. That's yeah, yeah, totally in the middle of winter. And and we and the night before we have a fucking we have a gig um at the Longhorn out in Dallas. So we'd have to get done in Dallas, and then you're gonna tell me we're gonna drive nine hours, nine hours to this fucking gig to go play a fucking ninety minute set on the hopes that we're gonna have a fucking crowd there and maybe make some money after. After that's sixty forties. After they take care of their shit, so like, what what is that? That that was that wasn't even talked about. It was just sixty forty split after expenses. Okay, what are expenses? Right. You have to tell me expenses, and I have to guess what the number is. What are, what if what if expenses are twenty five hundred bucks? Yeah. So what are ticket sales going to be? Oh, we're going to charge fifteen dollars. Cool. Well, how many people do you hold? Five hundred, six hundred. Cool. What are you going to do on your side to promote our show to get people there? Because we're not from the area, right? you know, or yeah. why don't you play it smart and put us with one of your big headliners and have us come in and open up for you. Throw us 500 bucks. We'll go get gigs the night before somewhere else, but at least takes care of our gas getting there. Get us hotel rooms and let us build a name in your area. But you don't want to do that. You want free promotion and, and you want to work for nothing. So fuck that. So that's my rant for the day. <laughs> yeah, um, there was a uh, local open mic, and I uh, hit up the uh, person who runs it, and I was like, "Hey, I want to start getting my name out there. Um, are you cool with if I send out an email list so that I can start getting statistics on how many people I can bring out to these things?" And they were like, "No, you can't do that." I'm like, "I'm like, why not?" You're not paying me. You're not doing nothing. It's an open mic. It's literally I show up and I do my thing for 30, 45 minutes and then I leave. I can't just do that. They're like, no. I'm like, okay. And you this know, person like runs most of the Fort Worth open mics. I was like, Mike. You know, Dwayne down there at Rock and Tacos runs a runs a open mic night on I think it's Tuesday Mondays or Tuesdays, but I'll, I'll find out. But it's Rock and Tacos and he's got a dude there with a system the whole night. In fact, there was a chick there the other day that she plays guitar and sings. So she, I was watching a video of her singing her fucking ass off, playing guitar really well. But she had tracks because she didn't have a band. Yeah. So she gave the tracks to the DJ. The DJ put it up, ran it through the monitor, ran it through the system, and then she was playing to it and singing. And I was like, man, Tristan could do this. This yeah. is a good spot for him. Fuck, it's right down the street. You know, I'll come down there and support you. So. I don't know if I'd want that all the first one, dude. I get real nervous, you know what I'm saying? I get all blushed up and shit. Don't be a pussy. I'm a little scared. It, it, it'd be different if Bob was just sitting there touching himself, looking at you. He would. I'd do that anyways. That, that, ain't nothing, that ain't nothing new to Tristan. <laughs> I'm going to stare at my phone at your merch booth. Ah! <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got him. I got him real good when this wasn't being recorded and when you two were not here. So, I'll let him get away with that one. But don't walk yourself into a corner because I'm gonna come back with the baseball bat on that other one. If you walk yourself into it. Corey coming in out of left field with the fire. Woo! 
Jesus Christ, man. It's all good, man. It's all good. It's all good. It should be warm over there. You can take your hoodie off. Why? I'm comfortable. I was coming in with fire. My... What? He was coming in with fire. You don't need your hood. Whoa. Relax. Hey, relax. Metaphors. Relax. No one needs to be coming anywhere. Let's While you were ahead, breathe. man. There it is. Coming <laughs> was the word, the keyword. <laughs> just breathe the second, guys. You had me at coming. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, yo. No diddy. Pause. Yo. Is, is, is that the thing now? No diddy? Yeah, no diddy is the thing. Is, is the new Kobe. <laughs> Whoa, wait. Oh, no. I don't know how I feel about Diddy and Kobe being in the same conversation. Hold uh, on. Wait, I don't. Trust me, they've been in the same room. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Pilot must have had fucking baby oil on his hands when he was flying that motherfucker, man. That's Bro. nasty. <laughs> Glass and meek meal on repeat. Yeah, fucking. <laughs> Shit, we're dead. I used to work for times like this to grind like this. <laughs> That whole intro has a whole new meaning, don't it? <laughs> Bro, go to TXR and you just hear everybody singing it. I'm just sitting there staring at him like, huh. Mm. This really it's makes cool. sense now. <laughs> I talked to Gary Hewlett today at Texas Live, man, and uh, he's brought this up before, and I want to I wanna put it out there in the universe, but um, he, he, he had said... Um, he thinks that a Deadwood and Kinfo show would be a great show, which I couldn't agree more. I think if there's a band in Texas that we can hold the stage with, no problem would be Kinfo. And they're really fucking good, but they're on they're They're different than what we do, but we're a lot the same. Yeah. They're all, they're all over Texas. I know that they are. Every time we go to a new venue, I look at the stickers. I'm like, ah, Kinfo, he's yep. been here. So I got Rico's phone number today. I haven't, I haven't reached out to him yet, but uh, Gary reached out to him and said, Hey man, I don't normally do this, but it'd be really cool for you guys to do a show together, et cetera. So I think I'm going to make that phone call tomorrow. See what I can get in the works. Try and do something at Texas live. Big Joe's right down the street. AC loves that gig. I really do. <laughs> I actually, love Texas Live as well. Me too. I was actually at Cowboy Stadium, the AT and T Stadium, all day yesterday for a drum gig. Mm. I'm so sorry. Did did you get to talk to Jerry? No. Nah, did you get I, to tell him that his great trade deadline trade was top of the line, greatest thing Cowboys ever did in the franchise history? A nah. fourth round pick for a wide receiver from Carolina with twelve catches on the okay. No, all he wanted to do was talk his, uh, his players' dick sizes for some reason. <laughs> I, I bet you that's why we got him. I'm just saying it. You know what, though? They ain't got a gecko. So that's what's up. I got all a the, gecko. All the millions of dollars, no gecko. Nope. Bob, in that Bob, are we boring you, sir? Oh, no. I just heard Dallas Cowboys, and I just figured you got to be going on about sports for a while. I got my Han Solo book to figure out. You, you fucking done yet, Tristan? Oh. Speaking of books. <laughs> yeah, good one. The drum set book is out. Yes, sir. You know, I got the OG of that. Right here. Rhythmic Reaction is out. There is a uh, chapter chapter four called Finding a New Home with Justin Ross and Deadwood Revival. That's actually a thing. Oh, hell yeah. Whoa. So you guys are y'all made the move. that's uh I'm actually kind of impressed. Read it to us. Read us part of it. Read us a read us a uh, read us a little I, excerpt. I can't because I'm waiting on Morgan Freeman to get back to me so he can do the uh, the Audible book. You want me to do that, man? A word. Yeah. <laughs> that, do it in the Morgan. You want me? To, I can. I mean, I can almost nail a Morgan Freeman. <laughs> uh, in the character. But... Oh yeah, they're 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 in the trailer. Was, here we go. Here we go. It was at a fire station in the middle of July. She walked into the building. Every man had her eye. One man ended up hitting that ass. His name is AC, and he hit it with class. A man's like a butterfly. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm I, gonna, 
Yes. If I was going to have somebody read the book of my life, I think it would be either Gilbert Gottfried or Bobcat Goldweight. Yeah, I want to. I can't even do it. Oh, I think either one of those guys would read my autobiography. Pretty cool. I'd want Mark Hamill drama. specifically in his Joker voice. A man with sticks hits his drum. Drums alone, but alone he drums. It's like a mix between Morgan Freeman and what's the what's the uh, Family Guy character? Uh, Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a mix between that. Like I'm Cleveland. Hi. Hi. I'm over here. To Anybody want to play? <laughs> You want know, to come over and play some drums? I do. Come on. We were it. just down at the clam with Peter, Joe, and Wagmire. You know that there is an AI Morgan Freeman that you can use. And you can type it out, and you can literally have your shit read by Morgan Freeman's AI voice. And it is fucking epic. Yeah. I am that up right now actually yes and uh it, i i thought about using it for one of our promos like a band from fort worth texas one band Bowman. six thousand miles they've traveled the distance but have they just to get double booked <laughs> <laughs> again but see, no, you gotta if you have Morgan Freeman doing it, you gotta like totally write and like Gen Z stuff and have him say stuff like skibbity and bussing. Oh, relax, like relax, that. relax, relax, oh, easy, relax. Yeah. We said we weren't talking about politics. Leave it alone. God. I, I... <laughs> yeah, that's just keeping it twenty four. Sorry. <laughs> that's a nice fucking poster you got back there, man. Yeah, I don't even know what to say to you right now, man. <clears throat> <laughs> Did you find it, AC? I think so. I'm about to find out. <laughs> I think there's one called Murph AI. It's like MurphAI.com. And it's got Morgan Freeman's voice. Yeah. You have Morgan Freeman read everything. Dude, and I think because when we found it, we were a little fucked up. And we're, we're playing with it. And we were getting it to say shit just randomly. <laughs> Like, because you can get the you can like get the wave of it, right? You can download the wave, and then you can send that in a message to somebody. And today is a good day, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah, and it, it was busting, and that was no cap. What's his name? Uh, the dude that says yeah. motherfucker every five minutes. Pulp Fiction. That is real. Uh, uh, Samuel Jackson. Yeah, there's yeah. one for him too. He's like, I tell you. This AC drama is a bad motherfucker. That's right. That would actually not be too bad. He said his ribs were busting, and that was no cap. <laughs> Tristan, that was for you, buddy. Did you catch that? He said his ribs were busting, and that was no cap. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh god, yeah, this is a thing. Yeah. Right. Oh fuck. I think uh, gonna, this is definitely getting copyrighted. Just let me know. Uh, sorry, Tristan. I think we can hear the audio coming back through your speakers. If it's not, cool. you, uh, no, it's good. It's like... <clears throat> yeah. One, two. No, I still hear it. One, two. No, so it's got to be. It must be. Bob, do you have it turned up real loud? No louder than normal. One, two. It's, an it's coming from somewhere. Do you have it? Uh, do you have headphones on, Corey? I can't tell because your green screen's taking them off your head. I don't know. Awesome. I appreciate the done. I have headphones. Yep. Yeah. I hear it coming from somewhere. All my speakers are wrong. Oh, no. I have no speakers attached. One, two. Oh, there we go. It's gone. My shoe. Bob, can we still hear you? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, hello. Hey, Bob, can you lean into your mic? The gross part is is that he farts on his mic, and then he puts it back up to his mouth. (laughs) 
<laughs> Everybody Dude. likes their own brand. That's not true at all. I hate mine. That oh, wait. Be- I got, I'll be right back. Yeah, I bet you do have to be right back, you dirty <laughs> fucking bastard. Sparted and sharted right there. See, this is what happened to me at Denny's. I farted and I thought, uh oh. Hey, then, we can play I Spy with this room. Yeah, I Spy. Like an I Spy book. I Spy a base that I don't recognize. It's that black one in the middle. No, so I didn't shit myself. So I ordered this thing like like a couple months ago and I just got Does it, it go up your butt? Smart deal. Was, yeah. Oh. I, it, it takes like practice though. Like yes, you gotta does. so all I can get is like butt trumpet farts now. Like it's hard. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better with my left hand though. We all are. But like the whole thing says <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to be a oh. Glad, you, Glad you caught that AC. Like, Glad you caught that. <laughs> I've Ever. tried to do it, and you can't do this thing without making the fart face. Like, <laughs> but you know, right now, if I ever get like, if you ever actually fart that way, <laughs> it's over, dude. It's over. Got a nice tight butthole. No more. That's not even a tight butthole. That's like a fucking extremely loud. That was a good one. That was a good just one. extremely <laughs> loud. Just <laughs> the fart came out your taint somehow. The one time we don't have fish on here and we're talking about farts. Damn it. That was a good one. Yeah. So I've been sitting around. Ayla loves this thing. <laughs> like, yeah, she'll pro- I probably woke her up. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> just with the sleep, Bob. Yeah, I haven't, haven't gotten much sleep in the last few days. <clears throat> Dude, that's the best part, bro. I love puppies. Oh yeah, she's awesome. Like the like getting them really young, bottle feeding. I love them. I love getting a puppy from bottle feed. That's how I got Opie. Yeah. Opie was a runt, could fit in my palm. Bottle fed him. He chewed on my fingers. It was fun. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, that. she's definitely at the chewing everything phase. But uh, yeah, that's why it's, I, I wear a lot of hoodies, and so I would just grab a hoodie, kind of ball it up, and then just yeah. Let him chew. Well, man, you can tell she's going to be strong, man. She's gotten me a couple times where it's like, yeah, that was painful. Bob the prankster, dude. Where was that fucking fart machine when we were inside that uh, down in down in uh, Crosby when we saw that? Thing, I, that one I ordered it. I ordered it like three months ago, and it came from China. The one, like, remember the one legged crackhead chick we saw in the gas station? She was yeah. on Dubs <laughs> Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, where was that thing then? Like, as soon as she moved, just... Right? Dude, that's the thing. Every time we go down to South Texas, every time, it doesn't fail at this point. We see someone with one leg oh, in some here capacity. She is, guys. Here she is. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Oh, and there she oh, is. Yeah. There, uh, there, there, you're on the podcast for all of okay, one second. the boys. It's the boys. You want to eat the mic? Yeah. Eat the mic? <laughs> yummy. Yummy. Yeah. Did my fart machine wake her up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I told you it would. <laughs> Here you go. Sweetie. Where is it? Where's the farter? There you go. No, baby. Hey, Sarah. Hello. I got to see a puppy instead of boobs this time. If you're lucky, you might get both. Yeah, right? <laughs> Only 838, though. What's that? Only eight thirty-eight, man. We started early, dude, because ten twenty yeah. about the titty time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's more autistic, Corey or Bob, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I can't figure it out anymore. Corey's just, just been on his phone. Like he just looks like a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Corey, did uh, did Wayne call you today about the uh, firewood? Yeah, they should be coming over Monday clock around seven. Uh, Monday seven o'clock. Monday uh-huh. around seven. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, I mean. If you guys need firewood out there, man, drop it in the comments. Hit up Corey. He'll uh, he's got plenty. If you're in and around the Azle, Texas area, it's uh, home of Tristan Murphy. It's exactly where he was born and bred. Was right there in Azle, Texas. Oh, so we're just doxing each Aldo. other. We're just we're just doxing Aldo. each other. Aldo. You were born. You were born in Azle. Yeah, no, right no, there. I fucking was not. Right on that side. Ballworth, Ballworth till I die, baby. Hundred percent. 
He, he, he tries. We all know. I mean, look how fucking far away his eyes are from each other. We know. That. <laughs> <laughs> I know Bob's not laughing. I had to get that one in there. I had to get I one. I know in. Bob's not laughing. Why is that? No, nah, don't worry about it, man. It's all good. Don't worry. You've had, plenty, you've had plenty of years to reflect on it. It's okay. Yeah, I'm like a fucking fine wine motherfucker. Yeah. There's there's just infinite wisdom flying around in this room, just not from the guy that was born in Hazel. Corey was born in Kentucky. I, yeah, he was. And when he sings, you can hear it. Hell yeah, you can. Yeah, in this hour. Like hey, you know what? At least he's got balls enough to sing on a mic. That's true. Okay, shut the fuck up. <laughs> So terrified of singing. So for the first time today since the Same. event, I actually took a look at the Texas live footage. Yeah. And I was like, from the, from the Reach video, and I was like, God damn, we look pretty fucking good up there. Like, I wore the trendy hat. Yeah, did you ever get those pictures too? Like those pictures? Dude, you look like a city witch, bro. I love it, dude. I loved AC's fit, bro. That shit was fire. It was fire, man. You look good. It looks good, man. It was... Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, did, I do dig that hat. Me too. Yeah. It's good shit. Hasn't been worn since. It's in the same spot. So AC, you jumped in as I was telling Corey and Tristan, and then Bobby jumped in later. But I, I'm giving you a uh, uh, a before. Like I'm giving you a sorry now, so that it when it happens, I'm sorry. You just know that I'm sorry. Okay. I'm gonna quit. I got I got back on semaglutide. And if I eat fried chicken, I have egg burps. So I'm going to try not to eat fried chicken. I had a salad today. I had uh, a gallon of water. Um, so is it just back, like chicken or is it like fried foods? It's fried foods and breads. So like, yeah, dude, you, like, bread dude, or dude, fried you will claw your way through the van to, dude, to, like, death got, to get away from the smell of it. It's terrible. Shit, man. It's just if you're going to do that, like live an all around healthy lifestyle, man. Eat totally. Right. Yeah, I mean, that shit makes your body think that you're diabetic. You know what I mean? So you got to eat right because it, it's it's good for it's good for some people. It totally is. I don't I don't dog that shit. But like you know, it's kind of like you know, oh, I, I took my insulin, so I'm gonna eat five Snickers. You know, you don't don't do that. Like, well, I I, uh, I woke up this morning, had strawberries, bananas, and an orange. Um, I had K brand cereal. I was able to do that with almond milk, which felt very weird. Dude, these guys better start uh, endorsing us really quick, but I just started Huel. Huel? Just, yeah, H-U-E-L. That shit's pretty awesome, man. Does it's it like taste a, bad? I heard it tastes bad. No, no, no. I like it. I got the I got the stuff. I basically just do it for one meal a day because, like, I'm, I'm weird. Like, if I'm not around you guys, like, I seriously, I just eat breakfast and then dinner. Like, I eat, like, once every 12 hours. And... Uh, that's the sketch yeah yeah i just like and, yeah and sometimes a lot of time more than i like to admit I, I even skip breakfast so the only meal i eat is like dinner but the that heel man you just put it in a shaker and go and it seriously it's just like like that bigger one man it, you're i was full all day long like even when it came to dinner I'm, like, I'm not really hungry and it's got like all this good stuff for you in it but that would be that would be a good thing to do i started taking a uh, burberry as well nice uh I'm taking that in the mornings, so I take the shop once, once a week, and then Burberry every morning. Berberine, I think, is what it's called. Oh, Burberry! That was a cologne. No, no, no. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I thought he said. It, it's just an appetite suppressant. That's all it is. But you eat, like, okay, for instance, the salad today that I got, like, I made it halfway through and I was stuffed. Like, I was okay, no more. I'm good. But, like, the, the fruit I ate this morning, like, I had, like, two strawberries, a banana, and an orange, and then I went to eat some Special K, and fucking, I was stuffed. Like, I was like, I can't even eat this Special K. It, dude, it's weird, man. Like, well, no, I mean, the body, it kind of makes sense, but, like, like when you start eating less, you just want to eat less. Like, if you if you keep it up, because, I mean, you know, back in my day, I, mean, I weighed 100 pounds more than I do now, and uh, I used to be able to eat an entire fucking large pizza no sweat just That's gobble right. the whole thing down and like now dude like two pieces i'm done and it's not even like i want more like oh i love that shit it tastes good it's like i just can't do it i get uncomfortable just because i think my stomach kind of just the inside of it is like oh you're not gonna stuff me anymore okay well i'll just go like this i marked the date uh november 5th because I got back up to 390 and that's when I made the decision a couple days ago I was like I'm getting back on this but I didn't go to the same doctor 
I'm going through future health and I went and had my blood work done and all that stuff. And it's 229 a month. But the best thing about it is that it's 229 a month, but that's it. Like you, it doesn't grow with, with the milligram as where the other place was like growing with the milligram. So like by the time I got up to like two milligrams, I was paying like $1,200 a month. Yeah, that's man, I don't know. I, I think any doctor that prescribes that stuff, it doesn't also prescribe like a diet plan to go along with it. it does. So guilty yeah. of malpractice. It absolutely does. There's right. an, there's an app for it. And so they give you a meal plan. That's part of the deal. And you yeah. like, I've got my meal plan on here that tells me what I should eat, how I should eat it. It helps me with out the whole nine. And so that that way you're not just depending on the medicine. Right. You're getting into this reputitious thing. That's what I wanted because with the last doctor, I didn't have that. And so now I have that. And so like I see like a list and like it, you also, it helps you make like a grocery list. Mm -hmm. So you only buy what you need for the week and you meal prep for the week. So which yeah. I thought was really cool. I was I'm like, telling you, if you can get on something like that and you could stick to it for an honest full moon like 28 days if you can like it honestly not break it once just do it every day for 28 days you never have to think about it again totally it's, it, it, it's uh, 28 days to make or break a habit you know and once a habit's a habit a habit's a habit it's so the goal is uh eight months it'll be eight months of this and uh i'm 390 and i will get down to 320 so i will have lost 70 pounds by the time there i go oh yeah so yeah, sweet. You thought I talked shit before, boy. Every time I see you, I'm like, "Are you sure, Justin? Are you sure?" Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like if like we're out on the road, like I can't eat breads, I can't get sub sandwiches, I can't do shit, but I can get like a salad, or I can get eggs, or I can. Well, get I had had this conversation with AC before, and I'd love to stick to it. Like I think that like any time that we're gonna be gone, even dude, even for like a night or two our first stop instead of a gas station should always be a grocery store. I'm yep. down. Do you know what I mean? It should, instead of a gas station it should always be a grocery store and it should be, you know, just shit like that. We got that fancy new cooler from those guys. We can put a bunch of fruit and shit in it and, yep. you know, stuff like that. Just cause yep. you know, we're going to be out on the road more and more. And I don't want to feel like I age five years every time we're out for two weeks. Yeah. You know? Every time we go out and we're gone for like a couple of days and all we eat is like Subway and bullshit. I feel dirty. Like yeah. I feel dirty. Yeah. Knocking back fucking a full stack of pancakes and sausage and eggs and shit at a Denny's or an IHOP. It's just like, yeah. God, I would throw up right now if I could hit that. Yeah, right. It's instant too, man. Like, as soon as I took that shot, it took about an hour. It kicked in. I was like, there's that feeling. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go eat probably gonna have one more you know cheeseburger before uh-uh i took mm -hmm. one bite. like that's the thing is like when i took a bite of the cheeseburger it tasted i could taste the msg i could taste the the shittiness of this burger and today when i was eating the salad i went to uh, joe's i had a uh, antipasta salad and you know how they wrap it in like salami and turkey and cheese and whatnot i ate one of those and i tasted this like raw the, i can't explain it like this rawness of the meat and i was like oh shit I, that's I, it disgusted me like i i shut down but i was full but i shut down and i like picked around it and was just eating the greens and, the, and the, you know the shit on it like the vegetables but i now was if we can just get cory to chill on those fucking red bulls be golden eh, he's young it's his gasoline you say that, man, but I, I sent him a National Institutes of Health a full ass article on the shit that those energy drinks do to the male body, and it's fucking horrifying. Corey didn't it. read it. No, he didn't read it. Of course, he didn't. Did you read it, Corey? I read it. If you read it, if you really read it and understood it, I don't think you'd be drinking those things anymore. He did. He didn't do the bad. The last show we were at, like, I oh. like he made a point to like point out every time he had one to me. Oh, did he? Yeah, I'm having a Red Bull. Like he would say that. I mean, I mean if we we're gonna bring up some improvements, I hit two years of alcohol, and I boom, haven't, I haven't bought a pack of cigarettes in over a month and a half. So well, yeah, how about, them, how about them apples, Bob? I did read your message. Just don't want to listen to it. <laughs> well, that's fantastic, man. Dude, I only say these things because I love you guys. That's it. If I didn't, if I didn't give a fuck, I wouldn't say shit. Cool. That's, I'm gonna put say it in a Hallmark card. I'm going to say something on behalf of the entire band for Bob. 
stop wearing fucking patchouli. It's becoming a goddamn problem. It's okay, so I'll stop wearing that as soon as you guys stop blowing cigarette smoke and 14-year-old cologne in my face. That's crazy, because uh, I haven't smoked cigarettes in three months. There you go, Tristan. I don't smoke in the van. Yeah. Uh, and I've never complained about the, the patchouli or whatever it is. Yeah, but <laughs> I it's thought just, it look, was it's, a myth. It's for some people. It just, man, fuck, goddamn, it gives me a headache. How do you spell it? Cigarette smoke gives me a headache. Okay, I won't smoke in the van when you're in there. Period. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Or, Half an ounce of sugar in a coffee gives me a headache. What now, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck now? What's up? <laughs> what? <laughs> How do you spell patchouli? Oh, no. Get Italian with it. Patchouli. Oh, yeah. Where's your pinky ring? You ain't a part of the family. Is Corey trying to find out if there's patchouli's bad for you somehow? It's a plant, a flower. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Part of the Ooh, mist should I start wearing way. like an ayahuasca cologne? You know, anybody that smells <laughs> it just randomly goes on like a stairwalk. <laughs> I wear that shit. Is that Hold a on. thing? I'm, I'm, I'm interested to know if Corey ever got the stain out of his pants from that blunt chronic shit. That old. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It came, it came out. That was some of the funniest fucking shit. You guys were sleeping or doing what you're doing back there, and he just fucking, oops. And I, I was like, Corey, that's oil. It's not going to come out. I hope you brought another pair of jeans. And to see him, like, hanging them out the window as we're driving down the highway, I'm like, dude, it's oil. <laughs> He's like, you're going to have to get some shit to take this out. It looks exactly like you pissed yourself. But the best part was you just sitting there in your boxers, and you saw a cop, and you are like, I ain't getting pulled over in my boxers. I was like, actually... Good story. Like, what's it going to pull us over for? <laughs> Great content. Great content. I would have totally turned my camera phone on for that. Like, right. Cobble up, oh, sir. Why are you recording me? Because my fucking uh, dumbass I'm middle not player. recording you. I'm recording <laughs> this dipshit over here. But, <laughs> yeah. but since what's, we're here, what's your badge number? Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your badge number, sir? Because uh, I know you can smell the patchouli marijuana going on in this fan right now. <laughs> uh, patchouli, everybody out. <laughs> oh, man. Man. Yeah, well, then again, when man AC walks by you, it's like he wears fucking marijuana cologne for him. Like it. next next Saturday, uh, that's the end of my two year prohibition. There you go. So hey. next Saturday is the day that your probation ends. Fuck yes. Finally. There we go. Watch, oh, yeah. watch, watch, watch what's gonna happen, man. You're gonna get off probation, and Bob's gonna quit two days later. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't gotta worry about that, man. I got an EP to pay off. I'm just gonna be in I'm just gonna drink one more extra Red Bull. Five years. <laughs> don't worry about me drinking it. I think. Uh, I think planning for the next record man i think uh shopping this thing is the right way to go and shopping it correctly getting all the content made and everything for you know let's pick we don't have to do 10 music videos but let's pick the songs that we want to do a music video for you know what i mean and and get those done if we could have all of this done by march 1st it would be awesome I think we should pick wow. another cause for this one, too, like we did the last one. My vote is either dogs or elephants. I knew you were going to say elephants. God, you guys are so hard up. Let's just go to the fucking thing to get it over with. Let's just I go. Was, over I was with. Say, that would make my mom, that would make my mom incredibly happy if we did elephants. In what the fuck well, is and we going found, on? Me and, Sarah, me and Sarah were looking up, and there's actually a similar place to the Endangered Art Foundation in Oklahoma. There's actually a similar place to that down, in, uh, down in Fredericksburg. Orphans. Orphans. Sipping on orphan tears. <laughs> Give your nut to tug. <laughs> so we'll shop the record. Yeah. Hey, we could put it at Walmart. Dude, we should just totally hit up the Wayne Foundation. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? Get to meet Batman? Are you kidding me? What? down that man's a puto what'd you say <laughs> take it back i have 
secretly been loving these videos I've been seeing of people on TikTok that have yeah. a little Batman mask and they're putting it on the cat. It's like meow, 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 meow. And then he puts the mask on. He's like, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> Like, yes. Uh, That's some epic shit. Uh, I have a problem. Batman. What's that? I, I have a problem. I have... That's a fucking understatement. I have now. I now have at least seven hardback Batman comics, and I can't stop buying them before I start reading them because I see one and I'm like, I'm gonna read that. Well, you should so get into the Star Wars comics, man. Dude, Seriously. I mean, we're never gonna sell merch. You see, uh. <laughs> Dude, this shit is crazy. Hold up. Yeah, nice. Oh! That's a nice computer screen. You're watching oh! while you're looking at us. Jesus. What it? Oh, this is Tristan. How many shirts can you sell while reading that? I don't know, Corey. How many parties can you actually make for the for the uh, band? How many band functions can you make in a year? Because so far I've been in the band shorter time than you, and I've been at more. <laughs> What's up? You okay? Your name's. Your name's. Are we Linda. good? Yeah, and you started that. What's up? You good? <laughs> How you I doing? Think, I think you need a last name. Uh, uh, so <laughs> that's my problem. I buy too many comic books. We got some great shows coming up this month. Do we? Well, I mean, we're opening up for Everclear November 22nd. We are. That's pretty badass. Yeah. Playing with Everclear up. at the Sawyer Park down in Houston, Texas. And, uh, I'm straight up going to fanboy out at that one. Oh, Seriously. Oh, that's, that's, that's one of your favorites, right? Yeah, I'm going to embarrass you guys, just so you know. Please don't. Oh, I'm gonna. It's gonna. We never want to open up for art again. Please don't. I'm, no, dude, I'm bringing. I'm bringing. I've still got my original. The fucking first ever clear cd and i'm bringing that case and i'm having having those guys sign it like, <laughs> sir, sir please it's no they, they're one of those bands you just like you know like you ever meet one of the like the bands where all you really would just want to say to them is just thank you just thanks you know they, they're it's funny they're, that they're the bass the bass band. player for uh for ever clear used to play for the etnies i have no idea who that I'm, I'm gonna call him green day I'm going to go, man, really cool to be opening for Green Day, guys. Appreciate y'all. Bob's going <laughs> to slap you so hard with his dick. No, no, man. I don't I don't slap, like, special people. Like, <laughs> just put them back in a short bus and tell them to go sell a shirt. Oh, Jesus Christ. Damn. <laughs> AC, I don't know what you're interested in down there, but uh, it must be really interesting. You're, are you scrolling through your phone? I'm actually playing uh, some uh, old Game Boy later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't blame him, man. When you put the fiddle player and the bass player in a conversation, it just kind of like brings the brain cells down. But it's all good. Man, y'all I did. Shitting all over each other today. AC, man, ah! I'm just happy to be here, bro. Literally. <laughs> Just be here. Bob, you need to clean that fucking room, man. It's a disaster, bro. What have you done to that place? Everything. Well, so, okay. So I've got like all these classical gigs coming up this month. So this is all my tuxedo shirts I got to take to the dry cleaner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got lots of rings. That's the rest of my tux over there. And then, yeah. Everything's in this place. Everything's, everything's in this place. You know. As a man cake. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's what they say. Geniuses are messy. There's proof. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sarah tells me I should clean it all the time. I should, but I'm too lazy and I don't care. I fucking got out there today to clean the studio, man. I actually cleaned this thing. It's like as clean as it was when I first when we first moved in. Pretty proud of myself. Ah, like, oh, shit! Finally got it done. I was what started is I was looking for my Apple Watch. I couldn't find it. And I was like, well, I better start cleaning and then I'll find it. Then I cleaned the whole thing and I still couldn't find my Apple Watch. And I was like, son of a bitch. I haven't oh, worn I my watch. I haven't worn my watch in forever. 
Is Mike, Yoda fell over. Is so, my green bean sign still in there? No, you took your green bean sign home months ago. It must be in the van. It's not here. It's not no, because we put it in my car. And then whenever yeah. we got to your house, we took it out. I remember that. Your green bean sign. You had it. Um, I think I want to say Bron Broncos. I think I saw it last. Or this is the last time you were here at the house, and then you took it with you. But yeah, no, it's definitely not in here. Um, no, it is one hundred percent not in here. But yeah, I finally got fucking organized, dude. Thank God, too, because I was starting to lose my shit in here. Oh, I'm starting yeah. to lose my shit now. I've been in a fucking rental for the past week and a half. Oh yeah, bro. Oh, in a car, rental car? Yeah. yeah. My transmission went out. Oh, no. I, in, uh, Bob, in between campuses. So, like, straight up midday. Fucked. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, like, half my gear is in the car. Like, the, the like anytime I'm gigging uh, like, outside of the band, like, I have, like, like, a small, super small kit that I just leave in the car for, like, you know, spur of the moment. Fits. All that shit's in the, in the, in the car. Uh, I was like, ah, I don't have any gigs coming up. It won't. It'll be all right. Yeah, we'll have your car to you by you know Friday. It's now Wednesday, and they gave oh. me a, they gave me a rental with uh with twelve miles on it. Okay, and, and um, as long as you don't uh, hit two thousand, we should be okay. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> funny. All, all right. right, that's I, like I, that's three that's three weeks of driving, dude. That's nothing. Well, we we've hit a week and I'm already at like 800. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> Dude, you guys, you guys should see the look on the guy's face when I go to get oil changes at the at the, down the street here. Like I go get one and then we'll go on a run and then I'll come back and I'll go get another one. And he's like, "You were just here." I was like, "Check the mileage, bro." He's like, "God damn!" I'm like, trucking driving all over fucking Texas, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm putting it away. Throw that Sorry. fucking thing away. <laughs> yeah. I think I should name it Carlos. I'm either going to name it Carlos or Fish. Carlos works. I mean, that's what our parts are named after, Carlos. Yeah. Yep. He always jumps in there. <clears throat> but no, man, we got November 22nd with Everclear, Sawyer Park. I put it up on our website. Uh, well, actually, I haven't put it up on the website. I need to do that. But I did put it up on our Facebook with the ticket link. So you make sure you go there or you can go to justinrossmusic.com and you can check out the shows there. I will get that updated ASAP. Um, I was waiting on a couple things, but we also have Firefly Resort coming up on the 15th uh, down. Uh, what is it called? Fredericksburg. Yeah. yeah. So we're trying to get a gig to go with that. Kelly's been busting her ass trying to find something for us to play on the 16th. And not to spend the night, just to play on the way home. Just, I mean, fuck, seven and a half hour drive. Like, uh, you know, can we play something down that way? Mm-hmm. You know, we get to sleep in that. I got to remember to bring the fucking fan with me. Why, bro? Just sleep up top with us. I'm up top, fam. I'll, I'll, I'll sleep up top. I'll crawl my fat ass up in that motherfucker. I get first bed up the stairs. I ain't crawling across the room. That's fine, bro. I get the back left. Better <laughs> the AC. You're blowing right up your cock. <laughs> I can slept great. Yeah, <laughs> like a king. <laughs> like a <laughs> like a fucking king. I thought it was cozy up there, man. I'm saying it was great. I, I'm not saying it wasn't cozy. I'm saying the bed downstairs was just hot. Like the room was ice cold. Yeah. It was blowing right down on you. That part felt great. But just the mattress, you know, you sink into that thing and it forms around your body and then you just wake up in a pool. It's like that part of your body, no air. Just yeah. die. I was just like, fuck this, man. Rough. Yeah, that was not fun. So, and I think Fish will be on that with us, hopefully. And if he gets his shit together and finds a job that doesn't shit on him every five seconds. You know, Seriously. so our boy Fish is our guitar tech and he is looking for a job. So, uh, man, he needs something that's like Monday through Thursday um flexible schedule he's a hard worker so if you have something uh you know whatever hit, hit, hit us up let us know what it is put it in the comments because we we got to get him something local around fort worth uh arlington area 
uh, would be preferable. But right now, I think he drives to McKinney. He's, he's that's the other thing is kicking his ass. Like, dude, dude, you like drives to fucking McKinney every morning to get like from where you guys live in Arlington, Holy, Grand Prairie, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not that bad. If he's, it's just toll driving. Like, if you hop on the tolls, it's really not that bad in the mornings. Like, I the doubt they're just taking the toll. I don't know. I'm just sure he ain't paying the bill, but <laughs> yeah, a lot of money. Hey, man, look, I found out that I went up to City Hall because I I owe a lot to the NTA and um, well, NTTA. Sorry, Bob. Let me be specific. Um, but um, you go up there and they're like, "Well, you owe this much money. You can't get your tags yet." Yep. And then I looked at them and I'm like, "Well, that's you can't do that either." I mean, it's it, faster it, them, but they could. Yeah, if they yeah, did it. yeah. And I'm like, you can't, you can't hold me hostage on that well, because they well, don't, they don't give me my tags. You do. They, well, it's a private corporation stopping you from doing business with the government. It's the literally the definition of fascism. But yeah, you, the, the guys will tell you, man. Like when I first started this band, I started in this band is 2021. My tags had gone out in 2018. I was riding dirty for four years because I owed the NTTA like 2,500 bucks. But then I was able to like I was able to I was able to talk it down. Like if you if you go to them and say, "Listen, this is what I've got," like they'll they'll help you out. Like oh yeah, like Listen, there's I, some I got twenty five dollars be- for your twenty five hundred. Yeah right. Here it is. Because, yeah, is like that was my whole thing. I was like, "How is that not fascism?" Like you're you're not the government. How can you stop me from doing business with the government? You know, I, like, I had I had the same I had the same issue, and it was uh, upwards of like three grand. And when I went into NTTA, I said, look, here's the deal. I don't have three grand and I'm not getting on a payment plan with you guys. So I can give you 500 bucks today and that's it. But I can guarantee fucking to you that the majority of the time that I was on the toll road and you could see it on your cameras was between 35 on or on 35 between Heritage Trace and 820 because they're doing construction there and they force you to get on the fucking thing. And you guys are charging me for that and I'm having to pay for that. I said, that's bullshit. So I'll give you $500 today and we can call it square. You can kiss my ass and I'll fight this in court. And they took it off. I paid 500 bucks and got out of it. Yeah. If you're stern with them, mm-hmm. what they, can they, they do? They just, they just want you to pay. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, because one, cause we had it was on, on Sarah's car. She had like <clears throat> something like 1800 bucks or something. And uh, they were stopping her from getting her shit. We just sold the car. We were like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> we just straight up sold it. <laughs> <laughs> Said, ah. Right. But yeah, no, like they can't, it's not legal for them to do that. You just got to be stern up there at City Hall or wherever you get your tags at. It's perfectly legal in Texas. You can thank the state representatives for that. Yeah. You you Mm -hmm. can't fight it. Yeah. It's, it's, Texas made it legal. Like that's, they will will just say, we'll go somewhere else. I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop there. Um, But there's reasons that it's legal. Did you know where the, where the, where the whole towway it came from? Like the whole thing was a scam. Like, cause uh, all of them first started with the Dallas North tollway. Right. <clears throat> and nobody wanted it. And, and then they said, okay, th- and this was back in the sixties. They said, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build this tollway and we're only going to charge tolls on it until it's paid off. Paid off. Right. right? As, as soon as we pay it off, we're, we're going to stop charging tolls on it. Right. And then what they did when it was, when it was, when it was paid off, they sold all the land to China, to groups in China and Sweden. Yep. And, uh, so they, did the all, same, all, they did the same thing with 820, the loop. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything that they, it's the NTTA, it's all owned by foreign governments and it's always going to be paid. Though I hate to say it, man, like George W. Bush is that's a magic road, man. That's a like if I say if I'm going to go to your house, like if, if there's no traffic, like man, 183 always sucks. But like say I go to your house at like 11 o'clock at night, it takes me 38 minutes to get there. Yeah. If I was to not take the tollway, it would take me a little over an hour. Well, that's like when we go down to like uh, um, Dublin, and or not Dublin. Um, when we go down to Walnut Springs, down that area, take like that Chisholm take, Trail, all Chisholm, Chisholm Trail, we take it all the way down. Like that, I know I'm paying for. I'm yeah, paying it, for it, it sucks because they're useful, but it's like, you know, now you got people that work at Walmart's along some of those roads and have no choice. You know, they can't afford it, but they have to take it to get to where they're trying to work. It's- so speaking of NTTA, they sent me a deal in the mail saying that you owe, I think we were up to like $1,100. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute, hold up. And so I called him. I said, hey, listen, I have an account with you guys. I have a mm-hmm. sticker on my van and it's like $40 a month. And when that $40 gets spent, it automatically puts $40 in. If exactly. You haven't been charging my account. That's not my fucking problem. 
Yeah. They were like, oh, uh, yeah, no, we see it right here, sir. Sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll get that taken care of. And then that got washed. Because I was like, no, 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 motherfucker. Like, you have, it's not my credit card you have. You have my bank account number. Like, oh, you're, yeah. you're on that shit. You should be pulling that money out every fucking time that I run out of money, yep. you know, for it or spend the $40. I automatically oh, they, they, they love to try and charge people for their mistakes because that was the whole thing with Sarah is, is that, like, we had moved. And they kept sending bills to our old address. And so it was all together. It was almost $2,000 for like $300 in tolls. You know, mm-hmm. it was all late fees and stuff like that. And I was like, dude, we moved five years ago. Why, what, you know, why are you sending them that, you know? Yeah, it was fucking gear All right, so I, I, got, I, got a, I got a podcast question uh, for everybody. So we're going to start with, we'll start with Bob. Then we'll go to AC, then Corey, then Tristan. Uh Bob, what was your most out of all the years you've been playing? What is your most embarrassing moment on stage? Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was. I was like 22. Um, I was playing for this singer songwriter girl. And we were playing the like the Burning Man, the one that they do out in California, the one that sucks now. That's not the first Burning Man. There was also one that they used to do in Santa Fe. <clears throat> the same kind of thing and uh and uh we were we were playing at this burning man festival and i'm 22 so i you know i, I was drunk and i and it, this show was the reason why i don't ever drink on stage because i got i got really inebriated and uh <clears throat> ended up vomiting off the side of the stage you know and i wasn't drunk enough to forget it so i remember like i, I remember that happening and the drummer <clears throat> that I was playing with was one of the best drummer, one of the best musicians I've ever played with. The UNT guy, you know, um, like when you're playing, when you're playing with good musicians, you want to play your best. And you know, yeah. you know, I don't know. I've got, I've never really been the type to get too embarrassed about anything, just because I really don't have much pride. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, you know, but like, so yeah, it would have to be something like, yeah, probably that. AC, yeah. what's yours? I don't remember when exactly this was. Uh, I could, I have to, I'd have to look it up. But I want to say it was somewhere between 2012, 2013 ish. I was playing with Loyal Sally, and we opened. Uh, we were playing the opening of a guitar center in Denton, and uh, Microphone Lewis, my uh, my guitarist vocalist, decided to get super baked along with me, but he did this thing he jumped and he was just all over the place and literally just fell into my drum set oh. <laughs> and first time in my like first time in my drum set career i just stood there didn't know what to do it's like well now i feel like a fucking idiot <laughs> <laughs> shit uh yeah i did nothing but i was equally as embarrassed for him because damn bro like shit yeah, yeah. What about you, Corey? What's your what's yours? Uh, I got like three of them. Well, just your number one. What's your number one? That was like holy fuck. All right, here's one no one did see except the drummer. Uh, I was running back up on stage, and there's openings between the steps. Yeah. Uh. And here I am getting ready to go back to where I was, where I normally play on stage. I was excited. I was running. I hit that top opening and I face plant. And my bow's over here. My fiddle's over here. And oh. I just land right on my face. And I get back up. I'm limping back over to where I'm supposed to be. And the drummer's just laughing his ass off. But like, are you okay? Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, the fiddle's fine. But that, that hurt. <laughs> And nobody saw it except him and me. I asked all the band members after the show, did y'all see me fall? No? Well, it hurt. I think I I think I'm still damaged on the ankle for them from that fall. What about uh what about you, Tristan? Um, in my short career, uh Avery Avery Mozzie was um playing uh Maggie's. It was during playoff season. It happened Fuck. When did we lose the 49ers? Whenever that was. She was playing Maggie's. She was playing Maggie's that night. And two weeks ago. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> and <laughs> um, when she would she would call me up, and this was when I had a uh, drinking problem, and I would get inebriated, watch you know at a show, go out drink. Um, she called me up, and she always did that. She always called me up out of nowhere. She didn't talk to me about it at all. So I always had one song, and it was House of the Rising Sun, because I can do that raspily and not really have to, you know, hit high vocal ranges or whatever. Yeah. And um, do what? Nothing. What, dude? <laughs> Check. Just, I mean, fuck, we can all play House of the Rising Sun. That shit's easy. Yeah. <laughs> no, not to, so, so, when, when you're looking down at your phone and you're not selling merch, I'm just going to call you up and say, well, since you just have no time to sell merch, maybe you can sing this song and just hand you the mic. <laughs> okay. It's it's whatever. Anyway, go ahead. Um, but I had gotten up there, but I was so drunk, I'd forgotten the words. And so we basically sat there for two minutes of me just doing a chorus. Yeah, it was pretty fucking bad. It was very embarrassing of mine. But yeah, that's mine. So around 2001, uh, up in Oklahoma City, I was in a band called Soko, and we were playing with Hinder, and this is like when Hinder, like, what is that? What? That. It's not like someone, what? someone's talking. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So we're playing with Hinder, and we're this is like right before Hinder blew up and got real big, and they had a big crowd, and we're opening up for them. And my big ass gets the uh, drunken bright idea to stage dive to crowd surf with my strat on me, <laughs> and then that's when I realized that crowd surfing is not for everybody because they're not going to catch you. And uh, I come off that fucking stage. And I turned my back as I'm flying through the air and nobody caught me. And I just went, and I hit the fucking ground. And somehow that fucking 25 foot cable of mine fucking stayed plugged in. And I fucking just kept playing, just kept going, like crawling on my back, trying to get towards the stage and just uh, dude. And then I had like, of course I had to unplug, throw my cable up there. Band kept going. I had to run around and get up on the stage and then plug back in and play it off. Like nothing fucking happened. This was all planned. God, I was in so much fucking pain. That hurt so bad. Like, I didn't touch. Like, not one person touched me. I fucking hit. Just I went from fucking six foot in the air straight to the ground. Fucking landed right on my back. Slammed my head against the fucking ground. In fact, I had a knot on the back of my head that blistered and was bleeding real bad by the end of the show. God damn. Yeah. You talk about the, some of the most embarrassing shit in the world, man. I was just like, fuck. Well, there's that. And then the only answer to that was to get royally shit faced after it. And then that led into the second most embarrassing thing that ever happened was just me fucking when they called us back out, like, give, you know, give, Justin Ross from Soco, man, give him a big round of applause. I was like, Brawr. like, just fucking <laughs> wasted on the side of the stage. Like, this is, this is horrible. This is my nightmare. This is why we don't do this. Stop, yep. stop doing that. <clears throat> you know what, man? Like those, those are all things that that happen to us that make us stronger. At a hundred percent, you learn. You either learn from that and go forward, or you you just hold on to it and fucking have that fear and don't want to get back on stage. You know, so it's like, like, like Corey, like, you know, he has one uh, where he accidentally knocked over his mic stand one time. So to get him to have a mic stand back in front of him again, has been a really challenging deal. It's not the fact that he couldn't sing the harmony. It's just that he's scared to hit it with his fiddle as he's coming across. It happens. It fucking happens. Like it, shit gets knocked over all the time. Fuck. I had a guitar. The, the fiddle's going to win. The fiddle's going to win. That, right. The mic stand that, that stands gonna going. <laughs> right. Uh, I had a I had a guitar player uh, named uh, Colin that was playing with me for a while back when we were Justin Ross band and we were playing this place out in Dallas or maybe Greenville is called the Gazellig. It's out there. It, anyway, there's a video online of it. If you look up, uh, I'll be there. Justin Ross band. You'll see it on YouTube and he's he's wearing his hat. And under his hat is this bandage. You can see it kind of like tapering off behind his head. 
And that's because when we were setting up, we had it like festival style set up. We didn't have time to get into a sound check. We had to like roll our shit in, get it put in place, get it done. Pod's symbol, his crash symbol, he had those silver hammered uh, Zildjans that were for around for a while. You know what I'm talking about, AC? Yep. They're kind of heavy. Very heavy. It fucking comes over as he's bent down working on his pedal board. It falls over and catches him right in the back of the skull and cuts into his skull. He's got a gash like an inch and a half long. Yep. And it is he is profusely bleeding. And I was like, dude, fuck the gig. Let's take you to the hospital. He's like, no, man, no, no, no I got to play this gig. I need money. <laughs> he was so about it. And he played like absolute shit. And you can hear it in that video too. Cause like he's, he's trying to play. He looks like Jack black. He, he He's trying to play and he's just so fucking out of tune. He's just powering through. Meanwhile, through that video, you can just see a trickle of blood going down his neck through his shirt. And I'm just like, he, Colin wasn't embarrassed. Todd was embarrassed. Todd was embarrassed because he allowed that to happen. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't paying attention and his shit went over. Cause that symbol was not only, con- not only just a standing symbol, but it also had a Tom connected to it. So it was floating over the kick. Uh, so all that weight, dang, fucking hit him right in the head. And I was just like, son of a bitch. Damn. Yeah, man. That shit's no joke. Small kids always win. No joke, man. And fucking. But, you know, we always have crazy shit happen on stage when you least expect it. There's a there's... Ash Simpson moment. Really? Like, during a drumline gig. Yeah, we were, we had this. Uh, it, the, the event was called Uplift. I'll never forget this shit. Um, it was an up. It was an uplift event, which is like a. Like a, I guess it was like a charter school, but it was like their big like graduation deal where like they're announcing like kids that are going to colleges and how many scholarships that they all received and so on and so forth. But it was at the old, uh, I guess it was Moody Stadium, yep. the old basketball stadium at SMU. And it was packed. Like every uplift school from all around the DFW was there. And we get on stage, Mavs drumline event. Uh, the mascots are all there. Uh, it's us and the drumline or the drumline and mascots. I set my drums down on my, my carrier and my J bars break. And the J bars are what connect the carrier to the drum itself. Ah. Uh. And right as I let my drums down and they break off, the snare drummer starts tapping off a piece. And there's like, there's nothing I can do. Like, I can't hold the drums anymore because my carrier is just broke. So I was like, well, take the drums off, take the carrier off. And I just start dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, all, these, all these kids and like staff members and the mascots just like they like when they got back to the room they told me like they 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 tried to save me by like like dancing with me and like hyping it up but like they were just dying you could hear them like laughing in the costumes <laughs> oh my god man like yep i had my ashley simpson moment <laughs> Just dance my way off stage. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, what can you do at that point? Nothing. Do you know how many times I fucking stepped on my cable and had it unplugged from my guitar? Like, because like I, I forget to loop it through my fucking my uh, strap. I have it plugged into my strap. Dude, it happened to us at fucking uh, uh, Rednecks of Paychecks. I was playing on that telly and I fucking stepped on him, popped right out. I was like, God damn it. And I had to reach down and fucking grab it and plug it back in. Well, anyway, guys, uh, man, we're going to conclude the podcast here today. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, every two weeks we do this, uh, man, uh, make sure you go check out deadwoodfan.com backslash our info. Check out all our sponsor links that are in the first of this video. And also we are running a special with pure body benefits. So ladies, uh, listen closely men too, but it is laser hair removal uplifts, uh, massages, you name it. But if you go to Pure Body Benefits and you make a, an appointment, use the co- the promo code Deadwood twenty four. Deadwood twenty four. You're gonna get ten percent off. They're already running a twenty percent off special right now, so that's thirty percent off. It's worth doing. So Deadwood twenty four. Make sure you check out the link that will be in this video for AC's book. Um, right there. Over the bar line, 
Rhythmic reaction. Rhythmic reaction. Emphasis on the AC. And that's on, you can get that on Amazon, correct? Yes, sir. Nice. Oh, also, right. check out Green Bean Cables. Corey up there can take care of all of your cables for you. Um, he can do pretty much anything you want when it comes down to XLRs and quarter inches, anything, get you the specs and get you high end cables. Bob is a teacher, and man, if there's kids out there that need bass lessons and whatnot, him and Ayla will come to your house and teach you bass, or it'll be just like this, and he will play bass with you and teach you. Tristan will absolutely do nothing for you. Um, he kind of like tries to work and run merch, but he's too interested in Batman. But he does do a hell of a god good job loading in and loading out. So there's that. He sold a good number of my books, though. So, <laughs> so you're selling his books, but you're not selling our merch. I didn't. Okay, you're right. You're right, bro. Got it. It's all good, man. It's all Got good, it. bro. Believe he, you are, on, he keeps tabs on all the inventory. How much he, are you selling your books for at the table? He can load the trailer five. without rolling an ankle. <laughs> well, there is that, man. I'm not going to get into that one. I could, Justin, I could go that way with that one. I'm not going to do it. I, all right. <laughs> yeah, I do Even it. with a broke ankle, I'd have worked circles around you. Me? Yeah, I'd work circles around you with a broke ankle. Hey, bro. The you're same. right. You're right. You're right. I totally don't load the. You're right. You're right. No point in arguing. It's all good. So bro. back to what, what, how much are you selling the uh, books for at the table? Uh, twenty five for the paperbacks. Uh, I whenever I get my the the hard covers in, those are thirty five. Sweet man. So we're marked up five bucks on each, and uh, Deadwood takes a cut, and then we're gonna give it to Bob to pay off that thirty six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that shit's <laughs> gonna shift real. Hey, man, if that's what's selling, you gotta mark it up. You know what I mean? It's. I'm fucking with you. Damn, settle yeah, down. Uh, shit just got real serious. Oh shit, he paused. It was yeah. weird. I was like, uh, 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 nah. All right, I'm, fellas. I'd rather just give Bob money. <laughs> All right, Funko I'm getting out of here, guys. Funko Pop. Man, you guys stay safe out there. Be careful. Thank you for listening. See you on the next one.